I've got R. I've got alpha. What was alpha, by the way? What does it signify? Again, what's it mean? It's the phase shift, right? So now I can say, therefore, I don't have to write 5 sin x minus cos x equals 2, because I don't know how to deal with that except without t results. I'm going to replace it with this new version of the same function, just dressed up more neatly. So I'm going to write down the square root of 26 sine x minus 11.3. That's r sine x minus alpha. Agree? That's equal to 2. That's the equation I'm solving. So I've turned two trig functions into one, and now I can solve this just like all the other ones I've solved before. I guess I'll divide through. And just like before, I'm going to say, oh, sine of some angle equals that. I'll just, it's not an exact value, again. So I'm just going to go shift sine, and I should get two solutions out of this, right? Go ahead, go to your calculator, go shift sine, two on root 26. It should hand you a nice small angle. What is it? 20 something? 20. Oh, 23.1. 23.1? But we know if you've got this angle, you've got a second solution. Do you remember when we solved this with t results, we got a second solution? How do I find what the second solution is? You can either do it this way, or you can do it this way. Right? We're saying 23.1 is a solution. Uh, something like that. So where's the other solution? Come in. Oh, can I just sit back with you? To who? Back. Oh yeah. Where were we? One solution? Where's the other one? It's over in this quadrant, right? S for sine because sine is positive. See that? So, oh, well, sorry, there. So 23.1 here means 180 minus that. Can you give me a number? 86.9. Okay, and you can confirm that over here, right? Sorry, this is a bit off. Let's fix that. There, you get the idea. So if 23.1 degrees is a solution, Here's 40, no that's 90, that's 45, so 23.1 is about there. So you can see if that's a solution, then that's also a solution. Same deal, 180 minus this number. Okay, I'm almost there. I don't have x yet. I have x <coughs> take away 11.3. So what should I do to both sides? I'll just add 11.3. If I add 11.3 to the other side, I should get a number that I recognize, 34.4. <coughs> That's all we got by T results, wasn't it? Do you remember? Do you remember I, I showed you? Yes. Or, what's the other one? You add 11.3 and you get? 168.4? Is that right? Yeah? Wait, no, point, hold on. Yeah, point two, point two. Of course it's point two. We're subtracting instead of adding, okay? <laughs> That's what we get for using our brains. Anyway, so you can see confirmation of the fact that just like we got before, um, I got this pair of solutions, okay? Now, let me make two notes. This has both an advantage and a disadvantage when compared to T results. The advantage is, at this point, by auxiliary angle, I am done. I'm finished. I don't have to do anything else. If I'd solve this by T results, there's one last thing I need to do. What's that? I need to test. Right? I've got to go back. I've got to check it out. Do I get a solution? No. Great. That's it. Okay. So this is the advantage that auxiliary angle has. But auxiliary angle also has a disadvantage. Look on the board. Do you see I've got a domain up here? 0 to 360, which is normal. Okay. However, by using auxiliary angle, we've shifted things. You see that? So do you remember when I told you, say, okay, let's do a simple one. 2x equals a half. If I actually solve this from 0 to 360, how many solutions do you expect? Four. You should expect four, because usually there's two, but I've made it wave up and down <laughs> twice as often. Okay? Now, a nice clear way to see that 
is that this is no longer a function in x. It's a function in 2x. So therefore, your domain really acts more like this than like this. Does that make sense? I know they're equal. But now you're like, oh, of course I'll get more solutions because it goes on for longer. Now, the phase introduces this issue, right? See here, right? I'm no longer really solving from 0 to 360. I'm actually solving, uh, take away 11.3, from negative 11.3 degrees to 348.7 degrees. Hmm. So, when you go and find your solutions, right? See these guys here, you're not thinking about are they between 0 and 360. You actually have to think, are they between here and here? Now, I chose this example specifically because actually this isn't, I didn't want to spin you out too much. This is fine. Those are solutions. Okay? But just suppose um, I noted this changed domain. Okay? I got down to the end of here. I saw this weird value, so I reached for my calculator. Okay? And then I got some solutions out here. Just suppose, because it's plausible, just suppose I got like 350 degrees as one of the answers. Suppose the fourth quadrant was meant to be one of them. Okay. That solution is not a solution because it's outside this domain, right? And you can see because if I um, what would happen if I add the 11.3 to get to the next line, the final line? What happens to this when I add 11.3? It will become 361.3, which is outside your original domain. Do you see that? So these answers here, depending on what your auxiliary angle that you find is, sometimes go outside the domain. Okay? So this is the cost. This is the benefit. You know, forget about testing. You've got solutions, they're solutions. You don't have to worry about that. You've got them all. But you have to deal with this. And this is a bit tricky. It's not easy. Um, you can't avoid it. You'll sometimes just get given this question. You didn't get to choose whether you use auxiliary angle or T results. You just got handed that. But um, it's still not nice. Like, look at that. My brain hurts just looking at that. OK, so watch out for it. Any questions? Russell? Um, I'm Once you find those two angles, right? Yeah. You mean these two? Yeah, those two. Yep. Right? And you, you, go, you use that restriction up there. Correct. Yes. Down. Correct. So let's say one of the answers was 350. Yes. Then it would still be. No, it's not between negative 11.3 and 347 okay. point whatever. So 348. Yeah, just yeah it, it doesn't exist. What you would have to do is, um, well, actually, this is what I'll do. So you know how I said, oh, 350 degrees, that ends up being a dud when you add 11.3, right? If this one is a dud, though, trick functions, they're periodic, right? There's another solution just like this one. 360 degrees earlier. If 350 is a solution, then if you go 360 degrees backwards, what do you get? You get negative 10. Now, you wouldn't think of negative 10 usually, because you're like, negative 10, what does that have to do with this? Ah, oh, but it's not really negative 10. It's negative 10 plus 11.3. What's negative 10 plus 11.3? It's 1.3, which sneaks into the actual domain. Do you see that? So you would abandon 350 degrees. You'd say, that guy is no good. Right? He's outside. But he has a cousin 360 degrees earlier, and that is a solution. You still get two. So, so I'm a bit confused. So use that restriction. OK, so to think about which restriction you use, you think about which function you're solving for. From this line to this line, I'm solving this function. So it's, it's not a function in x. It's a function in x minus 11.3. So therefore, it's, this is what I should have written. Sorry. This is the domain that relates to this. Because look, there's an x minus 11.3. Once I get to this line, look, there's no x minus 11.3 anymore. So now you're back in this land. Does that make sense? 